Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Adam. I'm here with my brother Elijah. What's up? And we are conducting an emergency reaction video for Disciple's new song, Bad Words. Um, it's an emergency video because I just came home from church, Wednesday night service, already rocking the Disciple t shirt, the Anniversary X <laughs> Disciple t shirt live stream. Amazing, amazing live stream. Um, and Elijah was playing Mortal Kombat. I came home and I was like, Elijah. We need to do a reaction to this video. So we're super thankful to Elijah for being a part, giving us his precious moments of playtime on Mortal Kombat <laughs> <laughs> to be able to react to uh, this video. And um, if you're not familiar with who we are, this is Sanctify Studios. We like to create and examine content with a sanctifying and biblical view. We've been focusing heavily on reacting to Christian music because we want to highlight those artists who are intentional about creating sanctifying and biblical content. So if that's something that you're interested in, then you can do us a huge favor. You can go ahead and give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. You can hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when new music arrives. And you can leave us a comment below. Let us know who you want us to react to. Um, obviously, we're super big fans of Disciple, so we are extremely excited about uh this song and uh already with these like cool graphics like what do you think creepy it's, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of creepy it's got it's got a vibe to it um and was that the same company that made like uh yeah we were we were Alabama. scrolling through here to try to find i always try to find like a place where we can get the name of the song so i was scrolling through and i saw the end here Oh, spoilers. <laughs> no, no spoilers. I saw the end here. And I think, yeah, yeah. So Jason K. Lugo is the same guy who made the World Gone Cold videos. I think the, the lyric videos that we just uh, released re our reactions to those. So, um, you know, we do reactions and then I kind of hold them in a Google Drive bank and then I edit them later on. So there's a, a couple of videos that I still need to get to. But like Disciple, we got to we got to <laughs> Disciple. We got to move them to the top of the list here. So um so yeah we're super excited disciple bad words let's just get to it let's check it out here is an awesome oh, i'm just soups i'm just so excited <laughs> no any words. any new just i mean they're my favorite band like they're all they're they're everywhere on this wall you can you could probably see multiple disciple right there. stuff up there but anyways let's check it out bad words by disciple you ready oh So many changes. I love the mixture of like genres. This is a great lyric video too. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's so cool that that lift. Yeah, so crazy. I feel like I'm riding on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What is going on? The 
Oof, it's creeping me out. Whoa. Drums are going crazy. Jesus, the ghost that haunts my house to rise my demons out. The only hope for me is found in just one day. So good. Oh, oh, oh. oh. oh the car's going crazy. Crazy. Man, that is crazy. Whoo. Dude, what did you think of the music of this song? Like, wasn't it crazy? It was so many transitions. There I were so I, many tra musically there were so up. many transitions. I catch up. <laughs> yeah. Like th this is it, kicking my teeth out. That's what this song felt like. It was mm -hmm. kicking our teeth out the whole way. <laughs> it was just so much crazy stuff going on. I love that there was there was transitions from head banging hard to almost like a hardcore punk rock kind of mm -hmm. section rock. and then it was core it was soaring chorus for a second soaring so much that it even felt like a key change <laughs> in the chorus so like and then and then the uh the bridge came in where it felt like we were riding on the horses right and then uh and and here's a cool thing about this new album that i really love is that there's a really great use of the acoustic guitar mixed in with all of this oh, stuff that was amazing there there you know we heard it in the executioner and then we heard it again here in the bridge and i really love that i think it's bringing a very real um authentic sound to uh to the songs and it just creates a little bit more of that dynamic this is not just a metal song this is not just a rock song it just feels bigger than that it feels mm -hmm. more complete um and i and i love that about this sound that they're going for but it was still crazy i think the drums we're the highlight of this. Uh, I think Joey West on the drums was just going crazy with this song. So great, great job, you guys. Excellent, excellent song. I really admire Jason's work here. How much transition. Yeah, this lyric video did. is awesome. Yeah, the transitions of like you're all in these rooms. I'm trying to find the cover again. Uh, there we go. Oh, see, look at beautiful artwork. Uh, yeah. Like, this is amazing. It's like a 3D version. Like, just the words, like, they look so real, kind of. So things look like they're kind of suspending in air at different points of the video, but it's so cool. It's like, we're in this, it almost looks like different little scenes where you're in a bathroom, you're in a room, uh, this little hostile looking bed here. It looks like you're trapped inside. Yeah, like, really cool scenery stuff. And the the way that the lyrics are just in different parts of the scenery. Look, like, look at that, aerial view. And the words are there. It's super, super cool. So great, great lyric video first off. And I, obviously, we as reactors love a good like visual to be able to kind of set the tone for mm -hmm. um, set the tone for what's going on here. Look at he's wearing Adidas. <laughs> he's wearing he's wearing Adidas shoes right here. That's I know that little bump anywhere in the bottom of the shoes. Um, yeah, look at this room, like super cool transitions. The lyrics are up on the walls, like excellent, excellent See, job. Try to go to like the first, like what was the first picture? The first picture we get? He's oh, in the bathroom. The bathroom. Yeah. He's in the bathroom stall. It looks like a public bathroom. A very public bathroom. Very public. Everybody in the town See, has been in that bathroom. What I like about videos <laughs> is they, they give out a good story. Yeah. They give out a message in these videos. Yeah, these videos definitely do a great job of telling a story. And like, I love how there's the use of a person. I know it sounds weird to say, but <laughs> there's a person in this lyric video. Like some lyric videos don't involve people, but there's a, I think there's even a couple of different people in this video. And I, and that's, yeah, like oh, there's yeah. someone there. Uh, and it almost looks AI generated or like, you know, created for this video specifically. We saw that in the World Gone Cold videos too. Like the guy who set the house on fire. Oh yeah. You know, there, there's people, which is really cool. It's a cool little added um, aspect to these these videos. It makes you feel like you could be one of these characters that is in this lyric video. So 
Um, obviously, in the beginning of the lyric video, we see this guy in the bathroom, and he's got this tape over his mouth. Let me see if I can get it. Um, this this tape over his mouth, and it says, "Okay, so the tape's there." And then we see bad words on it later on, and so like obviously that's the name of the song. But when we look at the song further and we get the lyrics, let me see actually if I can get these lyrics down here. Uh, da, 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 da. Do we have lyrics? Yes. Okay. So let me s zoom in here and see if we can see this. So bad words. Your peace is war. Your wrong is right. Your calm, your calm is a storm. Your dark is light. He who set who he who Christ sets free is free indeed. I won't apologize. I won't apologize. Nothing's gonna silence my. Okay, so nothing's gonna silence my beliefs. That seems to be the story here in the song. Like whatever the bad words are, they're related to the beliefs. So I won't apologize. I won't apologize. Um, keep it, keep your head down, better not speak, just give us anything but something to think about. I've got these bad words, all right, so we got context now, I've got these bad words foaming at my mouth, kicking my teeth out, my philosophy is your profanity. Okay, so like, I think that the message of the song here is talking about how the things that Christians believe and say are bad words to people who don't understand to non-believers who maybe don't yeah. understand why we believe what we believe yeah, that can be true so yeah. yeah so like i think that's really where the song is headed like especially with this line here my philosophy is your profanity like you, you almost you almost see on online how um the way that christians think is seen as so horrible to people who don't believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's the lifestyle, whether it's things that Christians stand for, it's just seen as profanity, the the philosophy of a believer, the, the philosophy of a Christian. Jesus, the ghost that haunts my house, that drives my demons out. The only hope for me is found in just one name, Jesus. The name that I cry out, that I can't live without, He's the air I breathe. He's my everything. I won't apologize. I won't apologize. Man. Yeah, yeah you're, you're right about how he's giving a message to these non-believers, telling them that um, that like he, he's not going to apologize about J Jesus. Like He's not going to apologize about the facts about Jesus. He's going to be bold. And we're mm -hmm. called to be bold. Um, and some people want him to apologize that he's, that he's not real. Yeah. So, like Jesus isn't real. Like, like, don't say those things. Don't. Uh, I I know that, um, especially right now in, uh, in the climate that we're in, with um, just some, some controversial topics. I'm not going to say them now because I don't want to make this about that. But there's a lot of controversial topics, and some people will say, well, if these topics are so controversial, why are you shoving Jesus down our throats? Why are you mentioning your faith so much? Why are we pushing that on kids? Why are we pushing Christianity on our laws? Why are we, why are, why are we pushing the? And it's like because this is our life. This is what we believe. We believe this is truth. We believe that this is righteousness. We believe that, you know, these things that the Bible teaches we're called to protect are what we are called to protect. That these that this way of living is something that we want to share. And this truth is something that we want to share. And this person, Jesus, is someone that we want to share. Like, yeah. this is what we believe. This is what we are about. We are about making disciples. We are about sharing the truth of God's word with the nations. And making, making disciples baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them how to observe the things that Jesus taught. You know, like that is what we do as believers. That's what we're called to do as disciples yeah. of Christ. And so like, that's if you- That's our purpose. That's our purpose. And so, you know, if you're a disciple of Christ, that's what, you, you shouldn't be ashamed of those things, even if other people think that they're bad words, even if other people don't accept that. You know, Elijah goes to a Christian school, um, <laughs> Do you sometimes feel like you, even in a Christian school, you can't really talk about Jesus? Or do you feel like you can? Because uh, I know it's still like, 
I mean, to me, I can about like to anyone, mm-hmm. but it's gonna be it's hard because these these kids are like they came from a public school. You can see that in them, mm-hmm. and it's really hard to talk about Jesus around them, and yeah, around them, and it's like they don't want to listen. Okay, it's really hard. So I'm like, what's the point of talking about Jesus if they're not gonna listen? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I, I can feel that way. Yeah, and I feel bad for the Bible teachers. and Like at the school? At the school, yeah. And the, like today, uh, we had a chapel where these two these two uh, people, my vice principal and a st- college student came, and mm-hmm. we're talking about like how their life changed and how like Jesus, Jesus carried them. So sharing their testimony. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And... I could see, like, I could feel the way they're feeling, all tired, probably sleepy, don't mm-hmm. want to listen to this. I know I feel the same way, too, and I shouldn't, but I should listen, see what's their story, see what's, like, behind their life and what Jesus carried them to do. Uh-huh. And I should I should listen to what they're trying to say and see, like, what it can affect on us. Yeah, yeah. And see, like, what can we change in our lives and Based follow. off of what we're learning from yes. them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I just, I don't know, it's really, like, to you, answer your question, it's really hard to okay. talk about Jesus in my school. Okay, If okay. you're in a Bible class, then it's not that hard. Well, and, and, um, well, and it sounds like you're saying even in a Bible class, it's hard because there's almost a fatigue to listening to it. They don't want to hear it, um, and... And it depends on who is in your class. Like, right, right. some students... Like for example, I'm not saying any names. There's this one student in my class. He like interrupts my Bible teacher. He mm-hmm. says this is boring. He it's like like dude, has that kind of attitude. Yeah, towards it. I was like sh- I was like be quiet. Like let him talk. Let him talk. Yeah. <laughs> like and and you know what? So the reason why I ask you that because I don't think that it starts with um, with this polarizing like um you know faith is a bad word i don't think it starts there i think it starts with i don't want to hear it mm-hmm. i think it starts there i think it starts with like this is boring i don't want to hear it yes i know you have a testimony whatever i don't want i've got other things on my mind right now i've got more important things to deal with i've got like more important things to study for whatever than bible like whatever i think it starts there mm-hmm. and then it builds into i don't want to hear it why do you keep telling me this? You know, hold on, like, stop. Yeah. I don't want you to keep telling me this. And then eventually it gets to, if you're saying that, it's a bad word to me. I don't even want, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to think you're wrong for even telling me anything. I think it builds into that. And I think we've seen that in the country, but it starts in the communities and our families, you know, um, it's, it starts with the kids in our schools. It starts with the kids in our churches. It starts with the kids in our families. Yeah, um, and it's really hard for them to like teach them, them young because they like they don't think it's really like what's the word um entertaining some right like, some of the high school kids and middle school kids don't think this is entertaining right right and like at the end of the day we train ourselves to be that way because we're always on YouTube or TikTok or yeah. Instagram, or we're always faced with entertainment. So when you try to sit down a kid and get serious about something, they, they're they so trained to want entertainment. And, and like, you struggle with this a little bit. I've struggled with this a little bit. Like, I think everybody in this generation struggles with it because we've been bombarded with entertainment so much that you sit down and try to have a serious conversation. And you, like, I know I do, I reach for, for your phone. You reach for... Um, the next like reaction video from Sanctify Studios or <laughs> reaction video from your favorite person or m- music from your favorite band. Like even though these are really, really great outlets and we want to be like family to you guys, we want to encourage you. Um, at the end of the day, we're still not like, you know, this this happened in the past. We're not really here with you. You yeah. know, you should be trying to build relationships with people who are really right there with you <laughs> and um, encourage people really there with you, your family who loves you, you know, like and encouraging your friends and talking about not being ashamed about Jesus, you know, not being ashamed about um, the gospel, not being ashamed about what 
he's done in your life about your testimony like those are things you shouldn't be ashamed to talk about in real life with your friends and um and i know it's hard like well i was just telling you even in a christian school some kids just don't want to hear it and, and i can only a private school too this is, this is a private <laughs> christian school and some kids do not want to hear it they're just bored they just they don't want to be bothered with it because it's not entertaining enough and you know lord willing their hearts will soften will soften to um the gospel and will soften to jesus but um i do think that we're called to still always have the door open to share to always try to reach out and be a part of people's lives and always be willing to be unashamed about the gospel and about jesus um so that when the opportunity does come that we can share that with them yeah. um because again if you if you're bothered with it right now and you can't get to a serious place where you really are willing to accept Jesus or accept biblical teaching or accept conversation about the gospel and about Jesus and about the Bible, what do you think is going to happen in like five years, in 10 years, when you start having to go to college and you start having a relationship and you have a family and then like things only get more busy. Like I'm the busiest I've ever been right now, <laughs> almost about to turn 30. And there's always something going on. If I didn't care about important conversations with Elijah or important conversations with uh, my friends or important conversations at church, if I didn't allow those things to happen, I would constantly just be spread thin and not pour into Elijah or not pour into uh, my family, not pour in or not allow. And you know what? Most importantly, not allow other people to pour into me, not allow other people to tell me when I need to learn things and tell and keep me accountable so that I can walk better with Christ and be able to live according to the Bible in a better way. If I don't take the time to do that, then I'm just going to end up blind. So, um, so yeah. yeah I, one, more, one more thing. What's up? Don't let bad people cr corrupt your mind. Don't let them get inside your mind and tell them, oh, you should do this this way. And you do it. And like, for example, like, like being a bad, bad uh, example to you. Yes. Like, I can't say this. Like, if you want to follow Jesus, follow Jesus. If you, if they tell you not to follow Jesus and you follow them, like you follow that bad person, you're going down a path that God does not want you in. That's right. And if you de denied, if you deny that bad person, God is proud of you for denying a sinful guy, but he still loves that guy. But he's proud of you going on a right path and a path that he wants you to be in. Yeah. And and I think, too, you know, we have to have love for even that person because we're still sinners. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You know, I'm, we're not perfect, of course. But I'm saying like a guy who doesn't follow Jesus that yeah. much. Yeah. Like, he's, he's not he's not um, living his life according to God's word. Mm -hmm. he, like, and maybe so, he hasn't like I know some of you guys who might be watching this are not believers and some of you guys are believers but for those people who are not believers god loves you no matter what but we, we love you too yeah we love you too and i know how we're not perfect and stuff no we're but, not perfect at all and like we we sin too we sin too and A we lot. always tell we always tell god to forgive us and he like you can feel the holy spirit like he forgave you yeah like he forgave you sorry we ask him yeah, we, <laughs> we we pray and we're like, God, Lord. you better forgive me for this one. We, we ask, yeah, we ask God to forgive us. Yeah, but sure. yeah, <laughs> my point is that um, for those people who believe in Jesus, don't let those bad people. Sorry, don't let those bad people um, get inside your mind. Follow what God wants you to uh, go on. Follow what God wants you uh, to do to yeah do. sorry yeah the path and the path that he wants you to be on <laughs> yes no that's great that's awesome that's really a good encouragement and i think even with this song we're, we're told uh you know i won't apologize you know follow that path where are we at where are we at disciple where's the words <laughs> where did it go oh, is that the end uh, there it is uh i won't apologize be unapologetic about following christ and following his will for your life um don't don't back down from the calling that he has put on your heart to do even when other people are telling you to shut up even when other people are telling you that what you believe is wrong even when other people just like elijah said don't let bad company corrupt you and you know you can love them you can love your enemies you can love the people who are telling you to shut up you can love them but ultimately that doesn't mean 
that you have to listen to them and that you need to obey um, their them tempting you to turn away from Christ. Yeah. Love them, but don't listen to the bad advice that they give you or when they tell you that you're saying bad words or, you know, <laughs> Christian too, you're too saved. You're too, uh, you're too Christian. You know, that should never be the case. Be unapologetic, unapologetic. Don't apologize for that. Excellent. Excellent song. Uh, everybody go check out disciple, go follow them, go support them. Uh, go on the, the rebel, let me see your head move it this way. The Rebel Society right there. There's a little bit of a glare, but the the Rebel Society is their Patreon. Go support them. I've been I've been on the Patreon for a while and always great content, always great stuff. Congratulations disciple on being a part of Winter Jam. That was so cool. I shared the video of everybody headbanging. I want to go to that church. I don't know where it is and where service starts. When right. service starts, but that's the one I want to go to. Um yeah, great job. Everybody go support Disciple. And uh, I want to remind you guys again that if you uh, like what you see here on this video, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button there. Thumbs up, subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos arrive. Go ahead and leave us a comment below with what you want to see on the channel, who you want to see. What did you think of the song? What did you think? And, I, and also to go ahead and leave this. Leave a comment below where you were faced with a situation where maybe you were sharing the gospel or you were talking about Jesus and someone was treating you as if you were saying bad words, as if what you were speaking, your philosophy, the biblical philosophy was profanity to them. Go ahead and leave in the com comments below a situation like that, because I really want people to know that you're not alone in that. Um, that, that happens a lot. That's happened to me. I'll go ahead and put in the comments my situation. Elijah, you can do the same. But you guys, <laughs> comment below. Let us know if you've ever been in a situation where you were either preaching the gospel, talking about Jesus, uh, maybe even sharing a Christian rock song or a Christian metal song, and someone was like, oh, they're talking about Jesus. Like maybe treating it as if Jesus in their song was a bad word um, and needed to be censored, needed to be you know taken out. So um, let us know in the comments below. And then one last thing, guys. Since I'm able to get this video in before the release, uh, my band Classic Disaster is coming out with a new single called To The Ground, and I'm super excited about it. It is um, our first original single that we're putting out. We put out Oh Holy Night as a Christmas song, but this is our first single. We have CDs for our live shows. Yes, it's a single, but you get an instrumental and you get a commentary with the CD and you get to enjoy the artwork. Make sure you guys have a CD player because some of these cars don't have CD players. I know these kids don't have CDs. <laughs> Honestly, this is for the old people who still uh, have CDs, but I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, the texture of it, was it's amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, if you do enjoy CDs and you want to come to a live show, if you're in Southern California, if you're in the... Orange County, LA area, come over to a show and you can find these CDs there. Um, super excited about it. And like, you know, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but Andrew Stanton from Disciple is a huge reason why Classic Disaster is even a thing. He joined uh, me and my guitarist together because we were we were practicing guitar under him. And uh, so huge thank you to Andrew Stanton. Huge thank you for Disciple for inspiring a lot of our music. So guys, this is just big family moment for us. Um, but yeah, go and support my band if you'd like. If not, no worries. Definitely go and support Disciple. And uh, any last words? Have a great day. Have a great day. <laughs>